The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. It's coming. All these voices. They're not yours. You had no right to them when you were alive, and you have no right to them when you're dead. Huh? That's what it sounded like. Good, so you know who I am. And then you know I'm not playing. You're going to let those women go. In Jesus' name, you're going to let those women go. Even here watching us right now? Watching us right now. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring Into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? What is up, Misfit Sugar Ladies and Monster Hunters? How are you doing tonight, motherfuckers? We have got a very, very, very cool show for you guys tonight. On um, this week is old boy's pick. And usually I don't know what it's going to be. But this week I kind of know because we were supposed to do it last week. Um, but... Oh boy, had to work over, and we just didn't get to do a show last week. So I kind of know what this one's going to be this week. Uh, and it's a science show, which I'm very, very stoked about. So I guess without further ado, I'm going to throw over to Old Boy and let him tell you what the show is about, uh, say his piece, and then I'll be back after he is done to give my view on it. So, Old Boy, go ahead, brother. So guys, tonight's show is going to be, I picked this one, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Again, leave your comments. Um, I seen something the other day about this. It, it is, is when your DNA, it's about your DNA, does your ancestors' DNA, we get, we get, you know, from them, does it also, we get the reminders of stuff they're scared, stuff they like, stuff they remember, bad things happen. And so maybe that explains why people remember stuff that family, like they think they're reincarnated, but maybe it's just a, the DNA remembrance kind of a thing kind of go. It's just a theory. Um, it's like, say that my great, great uncle hated sharks because he got attacked or maybe he was killed by one. I hate sharks. I don't know why. I'm not saying I do, I actually like sharks, but I'm showing you an example. But I hate sharks, and I'm very afraid of the water because of it. But I've never been to the water. I'm sh you know, I'm showing you an example. Or it's like, I hate pizza, but my uncle hated it. And he passed away, but it's in my genes. Or my dad, or my great-grandfather used to go hunting, and I never hunted in my life, but I know how to hunt. Um kind of remembers like genetically remind remindering of remembering things like like it happens with drummers and stuff like you know how to play drums your because your family did or somebody in your family used to and it is it you know inherited kind of like that but it's more like you remember things like a remembering so it's just an opinion of mine it's something i've been thinking about i had read about it on um facebook and I was like, that's a good idea for a show. So I told James, and he's all cool. I like stuff like that. So I think that's a that's a kind of weird, but kind of true in some ways. Do we inherit their scares, their fears, their loves, their hobbies, their talents? And then sometimes some people don't get any. So maybe it skips. But like I said, I, there's stuff that you're afraid of and I've never seen. Like, I'm not afraid of airplanes. It doesn't bother me. I don't like the ocean for some reason. Um, my mom loved the ocean. Uh, but I do a lot of stuff that my biological dad, he liked certain music that I liked and I, he, I never even knew he liked it. But we, he was never in my life. So it's just stuff like that. Um, the only difference is he was a brilliant genius. He was really smart. But like a lot of people who are very smart, they don't use it. They do dumb stuff, and he did. Not like James. is He he was opposite. He really did something with his life. And 
nothing wrong with people who are smart, but sometimes they're too smart for their own good and they get bored of life and they do criminal activities. <laughs> my, my dad did. So, and my sister's really smart, like super smart, went to college and you know, me, I'm, I have a brilliant mind, a way of thinking. I'm also street smart. I'm smart, but I'm different. That's what happens when you're kind of crazy a little bit. <laughs> um, I have a mind that works different than most people. I have ADHD, so I can think of something, so it's very hard to keep still that thought. It, I fight with it every day. I, I, I've really worked on it. It's hard to complete things. I have to really push myself. I have to, I don't want to be on medicine for it because I did and it messed me up. I was on Ritalin when I was a kid and, and it didn't do nothing. It, it did, but it made me like a zombie and I, I'm not into that. I like to think for myself. Um, but do we inherited DNA genes? Like stuff, like remember their fear. Like uh, I don't like to, like some people don't like to drive in trucks, but their families didn't. So... And they're scared because maybe they got in a car crash and from that fear they got it in the DNA or maybe something bad happened to them. And they that's why they get something in that head that says don't do it. Maybe it's something telling you more than you think, like in your body, like don't do that. Something bad might happen. And, and if you, you make the wrong choice, it happens. It could be a coincidence too. But I'm just trying to make a show of what what do you guys think on that and i would love to hear you guys comments because this is a really interesting show i i knew james would like it um i only read a little bit about it i don't know too much about it so james probably did all the studying because he's that guy um so i just wanted to tell you my opinions and stuff and what i thought about it so that's just what i was thinking that's my opinion um, I'll talk a little bit more about this, but I wanted to know what you guys think. Always leave your comments. Um, I don't know, guys. It's kind of weird if you think about it. I was thinking about it and processing it the other day. So, think about it. So, a lot of your fears might have been theirs. Of something that bad happened or they got in an accident or something could have killed them. Or they just had a bad experience and they have good experiences. Like, you know how like I said good luck? Well, maybe that the, the experience you're getting is the experience that they had with good luck so they're it, it's telling you to do the same thing it's kind of like um you know the devil and the angel on your shoulders but it's your family your dna and it's 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 making you have fear on things that bad had happened to somebody in your family maybe your cousin your family your that, that that may not be alive maybe your grandfather your your uh brother that had passed away even your mom or dad or wife. No, no, not wife. Sorry. You guys wouldn't be related. That's weird. Um, <laughs> only by marriage. Um, you know what I mean? And that would explain a little bit because why would some people just have fear or something they've never seen? I mean, that happens, but maybe that explains it. Maybe it's something that happened to one of our ancestors, like Back in the Stone Age, they got eaten by a dinosaur, and all of a sudden, I hate dinosaurs. You know what I mean? And and I'm scared of dinosaurs. Or a lion got my great great uncle in the 1800s. A mountain lion ate him, and I'm scared of him for some reason. I'm deathly afraid of him. Or I'm <clears throat> I was around animals a lot. My one of my family members in the 1900s, and all of a sudden, I just I'm good with animals for some reason. I have a connection with them. Um. You, you see how it, I'm trying to explain this. So, um, or like a truck driver or a driver, somebody who drives cars and, and all of a sudden you just know how to do it. Like you've never really had a lot of practice, but you just get caught on quick. And there's some people who just do that, but you know what I mean? That your family was a good driver. It always runs in the blood sometimes. Like baseball, like, like uh, Ken Griffey Jr. His dad was a great baseball player, Ken Griffey Sr., but he was a better player all around. But his dad was a baseball player and he was even better. And it happens, you know, um, wrestling. Um, Brett the Hitman Hart, his brother, his whole family. I mean, even though they, they, a lot of them have passed away other than him and I think one other brother. 
most of them have passed away in tragic, weird ways. Like, you know, what happened with Owen. But they were all majority wrestlers. And they married people into the, the family like that. And, you know, they, it, it just goes through the blood. It's just wrestling's in their blood. It's just a remembrance from your DNA. And it was, you're meant to be a wrestler. You were meant to golf. You were meant like Tiger Woods. But then there's some people who, you know, oh, I don't know how he, his family, they never, you know, maybe that that's not true. Maybe somebody in your family you didn't know, like somebody was adopted and they don't know their whole family tree and somebody in their family was good. And it just remember, the genes remember that. You know, that's it's it's just a theory. I'm not saying it's 100% fact. I'm just saying a theory. And it's a different thing. It's not about ghosts and goblins and dinosaurs and dragons. It's about, you know, a, a, a science that they're trying to do right now to see if this is real. So I, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's something different, you know. And I didn't want to do the whole conspiracy theory all the time. It was something about science and it may be a reality. It may be a reality and testing they're doing for it. So we'll see. Maybe this explains why people are good at things and some people are bad. Maybe that a lot of bad things happen because of stuff that's happened in our past. You know, they think it's a curse, but maybe this explains it. Maybe in our DNA, something went down our line. Just some people are better than others. And I'm not saying in a, in a, in a bad way. They just have better luck than others. Um, I think that's different, though. But... You know, some people have a lot of fears on things and they don't know why. And that could explain it. Maybe whoever they had as a family member it passed away. That was some of the reason. Like they got, they were scared of bees because they got stung real bad. And maybe they died from it or went to the hospital over it. Um, some people are uh, afraid of cats. Maybe because something happened with a cat that they didn't like. Uh, one of their family members and it just came down you just don't like it because there's some people who just don't like some things and they don't have a reason for it like my wife doesn't like heights if somebody in her family had something happen to her because she's never flown on a plane she just doesn't like heights for some reason but she loves the ocean and i hate the ocean i it's not i i, I think it's beautiful don't get me wrong i just don't like the ocean because the shit that's in the fucking ocean <laughs> and i'm not scared of things but i'm not stupid when you're in the ocean you can't really unless you have like a suit or a boat you're not going to really do anything if there's something huge in there you're not going to win that battle i don't care who you think you are karate guns don't work in the ocean if you're on a boat it does but if you're like just scuba diving and you got like a little what do they call those like little arrow uh not an arrow it's like a uh you know the little with a hook gun or whatever a spear gun that's like a spear gun that's not going to stop most things it might help you put like a little tiger you know a little tiger shark not the big ones a great white gets you and you, you you ain't gonna win that one that thing is some of them get 20 22 feet long or bigger and just in case the megalodon comes along that's 60 to 7 feet 70 feet long you ain't gonna win big gun you don't know what the hell else is in that fucking ocean either. But, again, uh, James has kind of got the same theory. You can't really fight a shark, you know. <laughs> Some people have this stuff. Uh, you, you might be able to, but you're nine, eight out of ten times, you're probably not going to win, ever. Nine out of ten times, unless you have maybe, I, I don't know, you're just lucky. <laughs> Hop back on the boat. Um some of these things are in the ocean. We don't even know. They're, they could be even bigger than we could ever imagine. Um, there's no winning. No. Especially if it's a 75-foot shark. You're done. Don't care who you are. You're done. Even you got to be careful in boats because if it's only 60 to 50 feet, it can sink your boat because it's bigger than your boat. And even if it's 100, they can knock your 100-foot boat out too. Maybe if it's a battleship or a big, big, big giant uh, boat that that it carries a lot of freight and it's like twenty, like what, five thousand feet long or longer? I mean, they're not that long, but probably what a. I think it's about a thousand feet long. I don't know how big boats are, bro. I, I, I I'm guys. I don't not bro guys. I don't know how fucking long they are. So, I know they get really big, like the ones that have airplanes go off of it, like in the uh, the navy and stuff like that. So. It could be really big. And if it's bigger than that, you're fucked. Especially if you're out in the ocean. 
in a little boat or, or scuba diving. No, I don't care who you are. You're not going to win that. Um, and there's other things, killer whales. I mean, whale sharks are really cool. You also got to worry about stingrays. Um, there's other sharks that can, bull sharks can get you. I don't think, I think bull sharks are more like shallower water, but I don't know, man. I don't know a lot about those kind of sharks. I know tiger sharks and hammerheads. That's another thing. Hammerheads are monsters too. And, and regular great whites and even regular sharks, you got to be careful. They can bite you. Not fun. Um, swordfish, if you're sword fishing, you got to watch those too, because if you're sword fishing, if you can, you see how big they get, like 16, 15 feet long. And if like you see people have got harpoon with their big noses, like it's like a sword. That's why they call it swordfish. People barely miss or they got stabbed by the sword. They can die. You can, you can die if that thing stabs you, man. That's, that's crazy how big they are. Um, it just, I don't know, maybe it's something in my genes. Maybe my one of my family members were a sea captain. See, my mom was adopted, and that's all I'm going to talk about as far as I'm going to go. And she doesn't really know that side of the family. It could be anything. I don't know why, but my mom loves the ocean. She loves to swim. I love that. I can swim really well. But my ears have always been a problem. I had to have ear uh, tubes in my ears when I was a kid. So just what it is. It happens. So, you know, that being said, I just, I saw the article about it. It was, I think it was on base pick Facebook, but it was like a YouTube video and they were doing some study about it. And they've been, have our, or does our genes have memories or does it remember bad things and good things that's happened to our ancestors? And I thought it was a good show to do man and and i know james will get more in depth uh, guys i'm i'm not the science guy i read a little bit but you know i'm smarter in other ways i'm just you know <laughs> when it comes to ghost hunting there's probably nothing like me there's very little like me but i have no fear james doesn't either we're a different breed we're not like most ghost hunters they know this we're very controversial and sorry guys and we do things that a lot of people won't do. And that's why we're unique. One's some people think is good and the other one thinks they're evil. And some people think vice versa. Because there's a lot of people have different opinions on evil and good. Religious, non-religious, Satanist, pagans, Christians, Jews, Catholics, whatever you believe in, Muslims. Everybody has their opinions on each other. And we know that it's not that's as far as I'm gonna go to. But I figured this would be a, a unique show. I know James is gonna be very interested and he told me he was, so that's why I'm doing this show, guys. And I like to do new things sometimes, you know. Ghost is great, uh sea monsters and you know, everything else is good to do with paranormal and aliens. We've been doing a lot about aliens and we're still going to be doing that. I want to do stuff like I said. I want to eventually get to Antarctica, but I'm going to have James do a lot of that because he's going to do the research on it. I know a little bit about it, but he knows a lot more. And that's a show that we really ne definitely need to do sooner than later, James. I'm just going to say that while I'm on here right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this show. I try to pick the best fucking things I can find, guys, so you guys don't get bored. We've been doing this for, what, six, seven years now, and you guys are loving us. If we ever get on TV, you're going to love us even fucking more. <laughs> Maybe that's what my genetic, genetics thought and remembered, my genes. Um, maybe somebody used to do something in my family like this. Um, I think that me and James were here in other past, and I think we remember that. And I think that's what it is. And I think we've always been like this. We've crossed paths in the past and we were chasing things then like the Grimm brothers, you know, and or the Winchester brothers. And we fought things that you guys probably don't think exist and they do. And they still do. Just not like you think. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the show guys. And I want to hear from you guys. I love hearing from my fans. Um, just let us know what you fucking think. Uh, remember, if you have small children, you probably don't want them to hear this without your permission. Uh, it, actually, don't let them hear it at all. <laughs> Especially with the, the, cuss, the cussing. But, um, it's for 18 and over. 
you know, some parents are more lean than the others. My parents wouldn't care, but you know, that's teenagers, but I mean, not little kids and stuff. Uh, it's not for that. You know, our show has never been for children, teenagers and adults, but now it's even more adult. So just remember there's language in this show now and probably going to be for a while or ever. But for that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. There you go, James. Uh, let you know whatever you want to tell them. Go ahead. I love you guys. Go ahead, brother. Okay, so the good old nature versus nurture debate. That's what we're talking about tonight. That's what this is. Um, this is not a new question. This actually goes back thousands of years. I mean, this goes back all the way in recorded history to like the ancient Greeks. They were wrestling with that same question back then. And I would say, even though it's not recorded on any cave walls anywhere, I would say that probably this goes all the way back to our earliest days of communication. Because if you think about what we're actually trying to figure out here, it's what makes somebody tick. What makes them who they are. Are they a certain way because their father was a certain way? Or is it the environment that they are raised in? So as Old Boy asked, do our genetics have a memory, so to speak? Do they learn and remember past generations so that they can form what you are today. So is it nature, which is the genetics, or is it nurture, which is the environment? You got some people to say one, you got some people to say two, but the truth of the matter is it's both. And I'll explain what I mean here. I got, I got probably about half the show left, so I got plenty of time to go into this with you. Let's say your dad is a bad guy. Okay, old boy used the example of his dad being a criminal. So let's say your dad is a criminal, he's a violent man. Does that mean you're going to be a criminal and a violent man? Because he was. Well, the answer to that is no, but it's easier for you to be, if that makes sense. Because what you inherit from your father is not being a criminal or being a violent man. What you inherit from your father is a short temper and a, an aggression. You know, that natural aggression that you have. Now, there are ways you can shape and, and form that. There are ways that you can mold yourself through self-control and study to not give in to that particular demon. I have some experience with this because one of my hardest battles in life to overcome was my rage. My father has one hell of a temper when he was younger and he would, he would lose his temper and, and go off, you know, and he was, he's a dangerous man. My dad, when I was growing up, looked like the Incredible Hulk. I mean, he was a scary dude and he could definitely whoop your ass. Um, so I was given that through my genetics, that aggression, that warrior's heart, that warrior's soul, that desire to inflict violence on people, if necessary. Now, I believe that there's a such thing as, as righteous anger and righteous violence. If you are angry and you are raging, and you do violence upon somebody in the name of good, like if, if you're fighting the good fight, I think that's perfectly okay. We excuse it in war, you know. We excuse it in a lot of different cases. I mean, imagine you're at work, you come home, and your, your door is unlocked, and you know you locked it. You don't understand why. You open the door and you hear screaming from upstairs. So you run up the stairs where your daughter is to figure out what the hell is going on and you find some man raping her. Now you're going to do violence upon that man. And it is righteous because he is harming your child. So there is righteous anger. Now legally, 
that's a whole different story. We're not talking law here. We're talking God's law, okay? It's a tough one because you're supposed to turn your other cheek. You're supposed to love your brother. You're supposed to forgive your brother. But I don't know too many people that could walk into a situation like that and not do violence, okay? So I also was given that aggression, that warrior's heart. And I battled it my entire life. When, when I was younger, I grew up in the church. And then, um, I've told this story before on here, my grandmother died of cancer. And I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to her because we had had a huge fight and then she went to the hospital and I never got the opportunity to apologize and, and to tell her I loved her and that I was sorry. And she died. And I, I blame God for that. And it, it's stupid because it wasn't God's fault. It was my fault for being an asshole. But I didn't, I didn't want to and I wasn't ready to accept that responsibility, to accept the blame that was rightfully mine for my actions. So, like many people do, I, I looked for a scapegoat. I looked for somebody else to blame. I couldn't blame her because she was dead. So, I had to blame somebody because I damn sure couldn't blame myself because I couldn't live with that. So, I blamed the Almighty, the creator of the universe, the all-powerful God. And I turned my back on God. And I became a very, very bad man, a very dangerous man. I was the kind of man that would, would beat you into hamburger on the street for looking at me the wrong way. I'd wipe my feet on your face, spit on you, and walk away. I was that kind of man. I was nobody to be messed with. I'm six foot five. I'm about close to 300 pounds, about 285. And I'm a big guy. I'm not fat. I'm a big guy. And I know how to fight. I hold a master rank in San Shao Kung Fu. I've studied seven different martial arts. I've spent my entire life in the pursuit of martial arts. So I know how to handle myself. And you add on top of that a giant chip that I was carrying around on my shoulder. Rage. Guilt. Disappointment. And I would take that out on other people. And then I died. And I've told the story of my death so many times. I'm not going to tell it again on this episode because I don't want to waste time doing it. Uh, if you have not heard the story of my death, go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. Shameless plug, numero uno. It's there. It's, I've made a video just for that. And it's also um, part of an episode called um, something about hell, true experiences in hell or people that went to hell and came back or something like that. And I tell my story of when I died. Now, I didn't go to hell when I died, um, but my experience brought me back to Christ because I, I know there is a God. I know that, that Jesus Christ is real. I know because I met him. He held me. I know, okay? So that brought me back to God, and I have spent every day since battling that demon of anger and aggression and and the desire to do violence. Now, not just randomly, not for no reason, you know, but my first go-to was always to fight. That's who I am. I'm a fighter. So for me to try to contain and capture and, and conquer that demon has been the hardest fight I've ever had. Now, I'm, I'm very happy to say that in most cases, I have conquered that. Well, I don't want to say conquered, because that's not the truth. And I don't want to lie to you guys. I never do. So I haven't conquered it. Okay, I'm not going to say that. But I've, I've managed to contain it, for the most part. Now, every once in a while, it slips out. Every once in a while, I get riled up, and, and I, I don't throw hands anymore, unless I have to. The only way I'm fighting anybody or, or, or hurting anybody is if you're attacking me or my family or, or to defend somebody that needs defending, somebody that can't defend themselves. Then I'll, I'll open up a can of whoop-ass on you. But other than that, I'm not 
I'm not that guy anymore, okay? But just being able to hold my rage and not explode on people when I'm angry, get into debates with people and, and be able to rationally discuss it and not blow up on them. That took a lot of work. Okay, now if we look at the topic of the show tonight, according to nature, that should be impossible because in nature, my genetics, I have that aggression, that, that rage, that desire to, to battle, okay? I've got it honest. Generation after generation after generation of, of my people have been warriors. We were Scottish warriors, we were Irish warriors, we were Vikings, and on the other side, we were Cherokee and Blackfoot warriors, okay? My entire lineage are warriors, all the way back. So I get that honestly. So according to nature, I shouldn't be able to, to be cool. I shouldn't be able to not lose my head and, and get angry and, and scream and holler and fight, okay? According to nurture, I shouldn't be able to do that either because the environment I grew up in was one where my father would get angry with us and scream and holler and lose his cool. Okay, now he never really did a whole lot of violence to us. I mean, we, we'd get whoopings, you know what I mean? But everybody got whoopings back then, and I don't blame him at all for giving me a whooping ever because I, I was a little asshole. I deserved every whooping I got and probably a whole bunch that I didn't because I was not a good kid. We were always doing all kinds of terrible stuff. And so I earned them, okay? So no problem with that. I don't hold no resentments. But that was a, the environment that I grew up in was with him not being able to control his temper. Everybody has a story about when they used to hold the flashlight for their dad and he would lose his shit when he was trying to fix something and you didn't have that flashlight in just the right spot. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. That was commonplace back in that time period. It wasn't like it is today. Okay, I grew up in the, in the 70s, dude. That was a whole different world back then. And that kind of stuff happened to everybody. Everybody got screamed and hollered at over stuff like that. Everybody grew up with their father just losing his, his mind all the time. Just Rah! going off, right? That was normal for almost everybody. So nature, my genetics, I should be a raging berserker. I'm not. Uh, nurture, my environment... I should also be a raging berserker. I'm not. I was, but I overcame. I contained it. Okay, I've worked very, very hard on it. So my, my point in this is, yes, it's both, but also it doesn't define you. It doesn't mean that's what you have to be. Just because your father was a criminal doesn't mean you have to be a criminal. Just because, let's say, your mother or, or your your a uh, grandfather or something was was a complete loser and homeless or something doesn't mean that's your fate. You have the power to shape your own destiny. Okay, now let me get a little bit into and explain what I mean by by its both. Okay, I did a little bit with that example, but let's let's take it a little bit further. Let's say that you have all the way back. Okay, we have a huge problem with obesity in this country. Let's say as far back as you can find doing genealogy, every single one of the, the ancestors you have, father, grandfather, his father, his father, right? Even on the mother's side, let's say all of them are morbidly obese. I mean, big old fatty, fat fatties, right? Big guys, big women. Let's say that's, that's what it is. So according to nature, you have that inside of you. You have that desire to to use food as either an emotional crutch or just to eat like a madman. And along with that goes, goes a certain amount of laziness because you don't want to work out to lose the weight back. Okay. So you have both going on. So let's say that's your situation. Okay. Nurture and nature both say you should be a big fat fatty. But not necessarily will you be, but it's a little bit of both, okay? Let's say you grew up in an environment where that wasn't the case. Let's say everybody in your family was fat, but your father managed to control himself. He managed to control it, and he brought you up in an environment where 
that temptation wasn't there. There wasn't little Debbie cakes and Hershey bars and, and all this stuff laying around the house all the time for you to shove in your little fat face. So you didn't have that environment of overeating and, and eating crap food. You grew up in a healthy environment where you had healthy foods and, and a good fruits and vegetables and meats and a balanced diet and not a bunch of sugar and junk. So then you only have one of the two, but you could still go either way. It doesn't define you, you know? But it does have an effect. We see it has an effect with addiction. Addiction is a great example. Addiction and mental illness. And, and the two are different, but they go hand in hand a lot of time. And both you get from genetics. Both of them, if your family members are addicts, you have that propensity to become an addict, most likely. If your family members have mental illness, then you have that propensity towards mental illness. Now, it might not be the same kind of mental illness that you each have. You might be bipolar, and your great-grandma Susie might have thought she was a dog and barked at cars when it went by. Okay, she was proper loony loon. But you, just a little bit. Although bipolar is a pretty tough thing, right? But you're not out of your mind. You just got trouble controlling your, your temper and, and, and your emotions. But that's not necessarily a definer for you because there's ways you can work on it. There's ways you can get help. You can get on medications, which you've got to be very careful with. Because trust me, my wife has mental illness. My wife has problems that she has to take medication for. And they're, they're scary and they are dangerous. And they can go really, really weird, really, really fast. They can stop working. They can have strange side effects that just show up out of nowhere. You're perfectly fine on the medication for months and months and months, and then all of a sudden, you're not. You know, she had one where she was great on it for almost a year. Didn't have any issues, and then all of a sudden, she kept raising her arms up like this for no reason, and she couldn't stop. It was just involuntary. She had no control over it, so we had to take her off the medication. So there's that side of it, and then there's the therapy. You can go and get different therapies. That, that can help you, not necessarily cure you, but help you, okay? So it doesn't have to define you. But in those cases, nature plays a damn big role in whether or not you are going to have that issue. You know, whether it's mental illness or, or physical uh, disease. I mean, a lot of diseases, if, if a lot of your family is diabetic, you have a better chance of becoming a diabetic, now, that's a lot of different reasons for that. Not only is it in your genes, but also you have the propensity to be an addict because, believe it or not, overeating and, and eating a lot of, of bad food and, and not exercising stuff, that is, that is physical and it is passed down. And it has a lot to do with whether or not you are going to be mentally ill and whether or not you're going to be an addict you know it plays a big role is what i'm saying your genetics play a big role in both of those things and it has a lot to do with how you turn out a lot more than nurture you could grow up in a in a family where your mother and your father both have no mental illness but grandparents on both sides crazy as a day is long okay so you could all of a sudden be schizophrenic. You could all of a sudden have all kinds of different problems, mental problems, major ones, not just little ones. I mean, big ones, because that is there in your, in your genome. But the problem is sometimes it skips a generation, you know? So in that case, nature plays a much bigger role than nurture. So as you've seen by all these different examples, sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's only one, and sometimes you can beat it. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be that just because you have a propensity towards it. Okay, like, like addiction. You don't have to be an addict. If you never touch drugs, then you're never going to be an addict. You'll have that propensity to be an addict, and yes, you'll probably get addicted to sugar or sex or something else, but at least you won't be a drug addict if you never touch drugs, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have it just because it's there. 
But there are some things, like mental illness, that it does mean that. You can't control whether or not you get mental illness. You just get it. Now, I'm not talking about, like, depression or something. And I'm not even talking about clinical depression. That's different than just you feel depressed, okay? Clinical depression is, is activated in the brain. That's something that you, everything could be going wonderful in your life. Dude, you could be rolling in money. You could be winning the lottery. You could have all the girls you want. Life could be sweet. And then for no reason, you're just bummed out and wanting to kill yourself. And it doesn't make any damn sense. There's no reason in the natural world that you should feel that way. But you just do. And that is clinical depression. That's different than I'm bummed out today. I, I feel depressed, man. Like my girlfriend left me and I flunked out of college and I lost my job and just things suck, man. I'm bummed. I'm depressed. That's a whole different ball game than two things. Okay, but just because you have the propensity towards mental illness, does that mean you're going to get mental illness? Not necessarily. Like I said, sometimes it skips generations. You might never get it. But if you do, there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it other than therapy and, and medications, and you're always going to battle that most of your life. There's very few true mental illnesses that aren't just where you just need to talk to somebody because you're bummed, right? I'm talking actual mental illnesses that are chemical imbalances in the brain that you've got to get help for. Those things, you are going to probably spend your entire life battling them. So in that case, it absolutely means you're probably going to end up dealing with it. Either you or your children or, or your grandchildren. It's very rare that it skips three generations like that. So it's going to affect your life in some way. And there's really not a lot you're going to do to stop it, unfortunately. Now, maybe someday we'll get to the point to where you will be able to. Maybe someday uh, science will get to the point where we figure this out. We can figure out the brain and figure out what causes these mental illnesses and what exact imbalances there are in the brain and how to, to level that back out and fix it. That would be awesome. Uh, Elon Musk is, is doing something very interesting with Neuralink to where he's sending electrical impulses into the brain, directly into the brain through an implant in your head. And that's able to, to actually cure a lot of different diseases, which is really, really interesting. Uh, it's going to help with mental illness. It's going to help with even like quadriplegics, people that are paralyzed from the neck down. They'll actually be able to, to send signals to the nerves to make them work again. How cool is that? Electrical signals. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, the problem is you got to get a chip put in your brain. That's scary as hell. And I, I probably wouldn't do it. But then again, I'm not a quadriplegic. If, if I couldn't move anything from the neck down, at that point, I mean, on one hand, it's like, what do you got to lose? Right? You're already screwed from the neck down. You're not, you're not living. You're there. You exist. But that's not living, you know. The only living you're doing is from here up. So intellectually, you can still live, you can still think, you can still read, you can still ponder ideas, you can still have a rich intellectual life, but you can't have a real full life because physically you can't do anything. But if somebody came along and said, hey man, if you let us cut a little rectangle out of your skull and pop this, this little chip here and it has all these little lead wires that'll hook right into different sections of your brain, and we can send electrical impulses down to those sections of the brain, and you're going to pop up, dude. You're going to be able to walk again. You know, you'll be singing like that, like that old frog on the Looney Tunes commercials. You remember that frog? Hello, my honey. Hello, my baby. That guy? I love that little dude. You're going to be doing that again instead of sitting there breathing through a straw just to, to move your wheelchair around. Would you do it? I think I, I think I might be tempted. I mean, there's a fear of... All you guys left your brain at that point, so do you risk losing that too? But if you're at that point, would you care? I mean, what, what's the downside? You die? You're not really living anymore anyway. You know what I mean? That's my view on it. Now, I might look at it completely different if I was in that situation, and God willing, I never will have to deal with it. You know, But if you're in that situation... It all depends on how you look at it. You know, are you one of those glass half empty people that are, they're like, oh, this sucks, man. Life is terrible. And 
and I can't move and and so what the hell I might as well I might as well die you know or you one of those half full people hey I can still think I can still have communication with my loved ones I can still watch my children and grandchildren grow up so that's cool you know that's still a full life depends on the kind of person you are and once again that goes back to your genetics somewhat because those kind of things are what gets passed down and then you have uh, more to the to the point of what old boy was talking about you have learned memories that are shared memories genetically with the whole species spiders snakes okay generations and generations and generations ago before we we civilized the world before we built cities before we conquered this planet and subjugated the animals that live on it before all that happened when it was still wild and we were part of the wild we were part of nature we were out there and we were hunting and fishing and and gathering for our food during those periods of time that's where we developed a lot of those phobias that we have now where you might be afraid of spiders or you might be afraid of snakes and you might never have even seen one in real life right you might have only seen one on tv but you every time you see one man you're scared as death but you've never seen one nothing you've never had an encounter with one so why are you afraid of it right as, as far as nurture goes the environment there should be no reason that that scares you. There should be no reason that you have any kind of negative feeling towards it at all because you've never interacted with it. You you should have no way to say, oh, that's scary. But in your genetics, you've got generation after generation of generation of generation of people that had to face these things out in the wild. Poisonous spiders that if you get bit by when you die, you learn to avoid that. It scares you. Snakes, if you get bit by when you die, a lot of these venomous snakes, especially back then, there wasn't no damn ER to go to that had anti-venom. That didn't exist. So you got bit, you were just done. You know, you were just praying to God that that you somebody could suck the poison out. Maybe if they even knew how to do that. I don't know if they did, but maybe they did. It seems pretty low tech. You know, they could pull that off. So you would just hope that that you could survive it. And it would be sketchy, and you, most people died. So that fear developed back in that time for those things. Okay, like the fear of heights. That developed because mankind is smart. We used to hunt, and we would drive herds of animals, like buffalo and, and, and woolly mammoths and stuff like that. We would drive them towards a cliff with a bunch of us running and smacking stuff and making all kinds of noise and throwing rocks at them and just scaring them. And they would run towards a cliff and we'd run them right off the damn cliff. And then we'd have people down at the bottom of the cliff that would walk out and start cutting them up and we'd keep all the meat, right? That fear of heights came because they would fall and die off that cliff. And you're running towards that cliff at full speed, so you need that healthy fear to stop you before you run off the edge or, or to stop you before you get too far where you can't stop before you fall off the edge. You see what I'm saying? That whole experience from falling off the cliff to the animals maybe reaching back and attacking you while you're chasing them, trying to get them to go off the cliff, that whole experience is full of danger. So that whole experience in our brains equals scary, equals danger. So that, over time, developed generation after generation after generation, got passed down, became part of our genetics, to where now we have that ingrained fear of heights, that ingrained fear of snakes and spiders. Now, you might be a person that's not afraid of those things anymore, right? I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm not afraid of spiders. They don't bother me. But when you're a little kid, most kids are, and you can learn the animals. You can interact with the animals and and overcome that fear through experience and knowledge. But it's there physically, that fear. So that is a, an example of a shared memory that we all have. The, the fear of public speaking is something that a lot of people have. That started the exact same way. The way that started was when we were tribal okay when we were all cavemen and women and we were living together 
in these little nomadic tribes that would travel around wherever the food was. So we'd collect all the resources we could out of an area. We'd hunt everything we could kill. When that started to dry up and we started to get hungry, we started walking on another direction. Let's go where the food is. Let's go where the getting's good. So as we're traveling along and we are doing these things, some of which, like I said, driving the animals off the cliffs, that's dangerous. So you can't just haphazardly and, and chaotically achieve those things. That takes planning. And planning takes leadership. There has to be somebody in charge in order to develop the plan, in order to institute the plan, in order to make sure that every single person that is a part of the plan understands the plan and is ready to carry out the plan. Okay? So you got to have a leader. So that leader is going to have to stand up in front of everybody and talk about it and tell everybody what's going on and what they need to do. Now, the only times that you would have that happening is in that case where you're leading into a dangerous situation where you're going to either get hurt or die or somebody you, you care about is going to get hurt or die, most likely. Because if you look at the, the fossil remains of, of a lot of these people back then, their skeletal remains, there are massive massive injuries on these on these bones okay crush injuries uh gore injuries all kinds of bad stuff so these people lived a hard hard life and they died ugly they died at the hands of a lot of these creatures that they were trying to kill to eat so that was a dangerous situation you're putting everybody in that's a lot of stress okay stress danger that equals fear also if there was bad news you go out on that excursion and let's say Nantuck dies. Well, Nantuck has a wife and, and three kids back at the cave. So now you got to go back to the cave and you got to find Nantuck's wife and you got to say, hey, Nantuck's wife, listen, your kids are, are now orphans and you're a widow because dude got jacked up, man. A woolly mammoth stuck that big ass tusk right up dude's rectum, popped out the top of his head. It was like Vlad the Impaler style. I know you don't know who that is because we're cavemen, but trust me, in a couple thousand years, you'll laugh your ass off at that joke. But point is, Nantuck's screwed, man. He's dead. And that sucks for you, and I'm sorry. So you got to convey that news to the loved ones. That sucks, man. A lot of stress. Very, very unpleasant. That equals fear. Apprehension at doing that. So if you look at every single instance where you had to get up and give a speech, during that time period, every conceivable one, every every thing that you can think of, there would be a reason for you to address everybody, a big crowd of people back then. 99.9% .9 of them suck. 99.9% .9 of them are either dangerous or highly stressful or they're just not pleasant experiences. So all of those things equal apprehension, equal anxiety, equal danger, equal fear. Okay, so that fear of public speaking, that's where it's rooted in. And it has carried generation after generation after generation through time until it gets to us. So final sum up as I finish this up, it's both. It's nature and it's nurture. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's just one. Sometimes it's neither. And sometimes you can overcome it and defeat it. And sometimes you can't. So it's, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. And that's why this question has been debated and battled about for thousands of years because that's the answer to it now we've answered the question that's the easy part but it's one of those answers that's a non-answer you know you're no better off than when you started yes you have that knowledge now you know what the answer is but the answer is is so vague that it does you absolutely no good because there's nothing you can pin down and that's the problem with it and that's why like i said for thousands of years we've been talking about it not us, them, everybody. You know what I'm saying. Love you guys. I'm going to throw it back over to Old Boy and get his final sum ups and shout outs and all that. And then I will be back to wrap up. Old Boy, go ahead, brother. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. It was something different, something interesting. I figured you guys would like. Yeah, I know I got the Viking haircut. My hair is not totally slicked back. So I have the Viking gush kind of hair going right now and the biker look kind of going. But, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the show with Staring into the Abyss on Parax Radio every Sunday nights at 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific, and every Tuesday nights, the best of show, 8 Pacific, 5 Eastern. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys want to subscribe, subscribe to James Hersh's YouTube page. We, you can follow us on YouTube uh, also. 
Um, you can listen to us on Spotify, Facebook, Parax Radio, and other affiliates with Parax Radio. We're try we're gonna soon try to get on the big, uh, you know, everything sooner or later. Um, I saw uh, YouTube uh, has their own thing going too on t uh, video and uh, podcasting now. I'm gonna try that one and Apple soon. We're gonna try to get on everything soon. There's a lot of big things coming, like I've been saying, but just can't talk about it. Um, you guys want to get merchandise? James will tell you where to go. I hope you have a good night. Misfits, cheerleaders, monster lovers, and demon hunters. I love you and have a good 4th of July. I love you guys. Well, the day after 4th, sorry. But I love you guys. Thank you, brother. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. This was a fun one for me. I love I love the science shows. I'm a, I'm a big history and a big science nerd. Everybody knows that. Um, so I really enjoy these kind of shows. And frankly, it shocked me that old boy picked this. Because usually Old Boy doesn't do science. He doesn't do science shows. Uh, old Boy's more about philosophy. Old Boy's more about finding a question and, and figuring out why. You know, not necessarily the exact detailed scientific answer, but the general phil philosophical answers. That's what he's better at. That's what his, his wheelhouse is more. And for him to pick a science one kind of blew me away, and I'm really happy he did. This is one of those questions I've studied a lot through the years my, of my life. I've been studying since I was a kid, all this kind of stuff. Everybody knows that. And this is one that always fascinated me. And I would read a lot of the, the, the Greek philosophers of the day and, and what they had to say about it. And the funny thing is, that's kind of the conclusion they came up to, too, is that it's both. You know, so I hope you guys enjoyed this show. I hope that you learned something if you didn't already know it. If not, at least I hope that that you enjoyed it. Maybe you laughed a little bit. That'd be nice. You know, laughed at my Vlad the Impaler joke. That was a solid joke. Solid. Well, not for cave people because they don't know who the old Vlad the Impaler is. But if they're time traveling for cave people, they might. Who knows? Thank you. all Love you. Appreciate you. As always, it's up to you to make up your own mind. And I'll catch you on the next one. Till we speak to you again. Love many. Trust few and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye.